Hi, I'm John Farley. Uh, I'm one of those crazy guys that when the weather gets bad, instead of running for shelter, I jump in the car and go out and get photos or video. And as you can see from the pictures behind me, like other storm chasers, I do like to go after tornadoes and lightning and so forth. But one of my favorite things uh, that it, fortunately I live in a place where you can see quite a bit of it is thunder snow. And uh, this past winter I've had a particularly successful uh, season for thunder snow, getting it on video on five different occasions. Uh, and that's what this particular uh, program is all about. Um, and I'd like to start out by talking a little bit about how thunder snow in the Rocky Mountain region, Colorado and New Mexico particularly, uh, is different from thunder snow in some other parts of the country uh, because all of this video comes from either Colorado or New Mexico. Uh, some of you have uh, seen the big thunder snow storms that they get occasionally uh, in the Midwest. Like the ones that Jim Cantori sometimes gets pretty excited about. Uh, these tend to cover a very large area. They're part of a large scale synoptic weather system, and you get embedded areas uh, within these large snowstorms uh, where the snow is particularly intense. And you typically, you have uh, what they call slantwise convection, that is, you have updrafts that go up at an angle, kind of like that. And within these big wide snowstorms, you get these areas where you get thunder snow. Thunder snow storms in Colorado and New Mexico are quite different from that. They tend to be more isolated, more, more in appearance like a summer thunderstorm, um, except at least above certain altitudes, it's snow instead of rain. Uh, and in some cases, uh, it's a particular type of snow that we call dropple or snow pellets. And this type of snow tends to occur in the heaviest part of these Colorado and New Mexico thunderstorm thunder storms. Um, and uh, it has a little bit different character than regular snow. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a little piece of styrofoam, uh, though a little heavier than that. It often bounces when it lands and makes a bit of noise as it lands, as opposed to an ordinary snowflake, which is softer. These are formed. Uh, almost always within convective systems, that is where you have a strong updraft as you do in any thunderstorm. Um, and the snowflakes in these storms come in contact with what's called supercooled water droplets. These are uh, water droplets in the clouds where the temperature is below freezing but they're not frozen. However, when they come in contact with the uh, snowflake, they instantly freeze and form what's called rime, kind of like what you see on the uh, trees uh, when you get a freezing fog. And that's what makes the snow pellets or the grapple. This rime accumulates on the uh, snowflake, um, making it uh, somewhat heavier and harder than an ordinary snowflake, but not, not hard ice like you get with uh, sweet or hail. So typically in these New Mexico and Colorado uh, thunder snowstorms, You'll have ordinary snow in part of the storm, grovel in the heaviest part of the storm, and typically also parts of the storm where you get the two mixed together. Uh, and it, it is largely a high altitude phenomenon. Some of these storms will be rain below a certain altitude, but then when you get up to a higher altitude, the precipitation type is snow, and you continue to get the thunder and lightning. So that's pretty much what these storms are about. It can go from uh, sunny to thunder snow, in a matter of just a few minutes, which again is different from what you would see in other parts of the country. So with that, we'll get into the uh, video of the particular events on different days. This first segment of video is from November 29th, 2019, and it was taken in the mountains just above Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, there was a line of strong rain and snow squalls ahead of a Pacific cold front uh, moving across New Mexico midday. And just after one o'clock, the National Weather Service in Albuquerque issued a special weather statement uh, for this line as it was moving through the Santa Fe and Albuquerque areas and moving into them uh, for the potential for heavy rain and heavy snow along with 50 to 55 mile an hour wind gusts. 
and as I checked the lightning tracker, I could see that uh, the storm was becoming electric reactive just southwest of Santa Fe. So I headed up into the mountains. It would probably start out as rain and change to snow in town, but once you got up into the mountains, uh, yeah, the precipitation type would be mainly snow. Uh, this storm was a little unusual uh, in, the, in addition to the usual uh, snow and gravel and thunder and lightning that you get with these thunder snow storms that actually produce a little bit of hail and also at one location uh, too far where I was filming it was severe as a 58 mile an hour thunderstorm wind gust was recorded. Uh, severe thunder snow does happen but it's pretty rare uh, but this, this was a pretty intense uh, storm. So in the video you'll see uh, it's starting out as I'm going up into the mountains as a mix of rain and snow uh, goes over to Grothel and then right at the beginning even a brief period of hail and then back to Grothel and ordinary snow uh, with thunder and lightning occurring throughout the time uh, and did produce some very uh, intense uh, snowfall rates. Uh, for a short time in the mountains and even some accumulation in town. Okay, I'm in a thunderstorm with uh, mixed rain and snow. I'm trying to get up to where it's all snow. Stuck behind the slow Texan, he's probably scared shitless.
It's going right over to snow now, mostly ordinary snow. Thunder snow. Are we still videoing? I think so. Yes. Pretty strong wind with this too. Our next storms happened in and around the Santa Fe, New Mexico metropolitan area on December 27, 2019. And these storms occurred ahead of an area of strong low pressure that passed just to the northwest of Santa Fe and uh, along and ahead of a Pacific cold front that extended to the south from that low pressure area. These storms really illustrate uh, the difference between thunder snow storms in Colorado and New Mexico from those in other parts of the country as we talked about earlier. I'm going to start out by showing a radar loop and if you look to the upper center part of the loop you will see the storms as they move almost due north, just east of due north, through the western part of the Santa Fe metropolitan area. It was to the north of there uh, that I intercepted them. And if you look at this, you can see isolated areas of very intense precipitation. So let's take a look at this radar loop, which I'll loop through uh, a few times. You can see the relatively isolated nature of the storms in that radar loop. And I'm going to show it again here in a minute because it will also show you that there's another very strong cell farther over to the west between the Rio Rancho and Los Alamos areas near the southern edge of the uh, Jemez Mountains. And this storm actually looks on the radar like it took on supercell characteristics for a short period of time.
These storms did produce some rain in the relatively lower elevations, below around 6,500 to 7,000 feet. From about 7,000 feet up, and that's about the elevation of downtown Santa Fe, the precipitation type was predominantly gravel and snow. And these storms were quite electrified. And uh, as we look at the video, as I intercepted this line of storms just to the north of Santa Fe, uh, you'll see I actually was fortunate to catch a couple of bolts of lightning on the video. And we'll also see that the storms had some storm structure that in a way looked more like a typical summer thunderstorm than what many might expect with a thunder snowstorm. So now let's take a look at the video of the storms. Okay, we have what at least has been a thunderstorm here, producing a mixture of mixture of rain, snow, and gravel. Try to get farther. There's lightning. There it is, we have thunder snow. I'm gonna to try to get farther from the road now. for a while. There's a mixture of uh, rain and gravel now, but it does look like there's another core coming in, so I wouldn't be surprised to get some more lightning. Back that way is where the core is coming in. Here comes the gravel again. There's the updraft base back there. And a little bit of a shelf cloud.
This is good size grapple coming down now. Fortunately, it's coming in the car. Yep. It's going over to ordinary snow now. As you may have been able to see in that video, there were really two distinct cells within that line that I intercepted north of Santa Fe. And I want to show you now uh, the appearance of the area near the updraft in the second or tail end one at the time of those two cells. And you'll see it actually has structure like you'd see with a summer thunderstorm, including the formation of a shelf cloud. After this intercept, the storms moved on to the north, and I thought I was through with thunder snow. But after I got back into town, another strong cell developed just south of Santa Fe and moved right over the city. And all I had to do was go out the door to get some more video of thunder snow right in town. Here's that video. Okay, I'm back in town now. We got a mixture of rain and snow and uh, frequent thunder and lightning right here. Here comes a burst of grapple. There might even be a little hail in with this. Temperatures in the mid 30s. You know, a mix of grapple and snow. Mostly ordinary snow now.
And the sun's actually coming out now. It's still snowing a little. And still thundering. Before we move on to our next storm, it's worthy to note that that storm that we just saw, uh, that cluster of storms, I should say, was part of a much larger area of thunderstorms that extended out onto the eastern plains in New Mexico on the other side of the mountains from the Santa Fe area. And some of those storms were quite strong. A supercell developed north of Clovis, New Mexico, and it produced an EF1 tornado with a damage path almost five miles long, and that was the latest in the year tornado on record in the state of New Mexico. So this was uh, quite an interesting storm system. For our next storm now, we jump ahead to March 13th of 2020, uh, and it's worth mentioning in that context that most of the thunder snow in the Rocky Mountain region occurs in the early and late part of the snow season. In other words, from October uh, through December, and then again from about March through May. In January and February, although you can occasionally get thunder snow, it's oftentimes too cold, so it doesn't happen as often in January and February as it does either earlier or later. This storm is one that I observed while I was skiing at the Pajarito Ski Area near Los Alamos on March 13th, uh, which turned out to be my last ski day because of the COVID situation. But uh, it was a good ski day because there was a couple of inches of snow uh, that fell during the morning. Uh, so the ski conditions were very good. Then the sun came out for a while, then it clouded over, and some fairly heavy grottle began to fall. And as I was skiing down on what I thought was probably going to be my last run, at least before I took a break, there was a flash of lightning and a rumble of thunder. So I got to a safe place uh, in the lodge area and started getting some video. And uh, although this is just a short clip, it's fairly dramatic because there was quite a close strike of lightning uh, followed within less than a second uh, by thunder. So we'll look at this now at the Pajarito ski area. Okay, we got thunder snow. Just had a flash of lightning and some thunder here at Pajarito ski area. So I'll see if I can catch another one. This is mainly some pretty good sized snow pellets coming down here. They'll be closing the lifts because of the lightning. Now there's a flash. And that was very close, less than a quarter mile away. I only had to wait about eight days for my next encounter with thunder snow, this time in and southwest of the Pagosa Springs, Colorado area. On March 21st, strong thunderstorms developed near Shiprock, New Mexico, and began to track to the east-northeast. In its early stages, one of these storms even produced a brief landspout tornado southwest of Farmington, New Mexico. Uh, over the course of the afternoon, the National Weather Service put out four different special weather statements for this storm, three from the Albuquerque NWS and one from Grand Junction. All of these were for hail and strong winds. It was actually only later that the tornado was reported. It became evident that as these storms tracked east-northeast toward the Pagosa Springs area, they were likely to produce predominantly snow once they got to about 
a 6,500 elevation level. So I decided as I saw the storms approaching when they were uh, near the north end of Navajo Lake that this would be a good thunderstorm intercept opportunity. I'm going to start with four still photos. The first two taken from the southwest edge of Pagosa Springs looking to the off to the southwest at the storm which at that point it was still probably 20 to 30 miles away but tracking in my direction and then after that a closer view of the storm as it approached Chimney Rock National Monument about 20 miles southwest of Pagosa Springs and the last still image is of a flash of cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning that uh, I was able to capture in the early stages of the storm. Now we'll look at the video of the storm, which begins near Chimney Rock National Monument, and uh, gradually I work my way back up to Pagosa Springs along with the storm. This is one of the most intensely electrified snowstorms I've ever seen, and as you'll see in the video, there are times when one roll of thunder's not even ended and another one begins. All in all, in this eight minute segment, I captured two dozen at least, uh, rumbles or cracks of thunder and quite a few flashes of lightning with the precipitation type starting out as a mixture of rain and snow and then fairly quickly going over to all snow. Along 160 from north of Chimney Rock all the way back up into Pagosa Springs the precipitation type was entirely snow and the lightning uh, continued and it accumulated about another half inch in Pagosa Springs. Uh, this, this whole system developed on the backside of a strong weather system that had gone through over the previous couple days, dropping about seven inches of snow in Pagosa Springs and more in the mountains. And this thunder snow cell added another half inch or so in a short time to the uh, snow on the ground in Pagosa Springs, some of which had melted from the previous storms. So here's the video starting near Chimney Rock National Monument. There we got thunder snow because it is partly snow coming down. It's a mixture of rain and snow right now. entrance to Chimney Rock National Monument. Now it's going over to mainly snow and lots of thunder and lightning. Still a mixture, but more snow than rain.
some tireless snow now. Switch and it's starting to come in. I think I might chase this back to Pagosa. Okay, I'm back up by 160 now, all snow here. back up in Pagosa now where it's all snow and may have been from the start and it's accumulating and we've still got thunder snow. As you could see there, the storm was 
quite electrified with very frequent lightning and also at times very close lightning, sometimes uh, less than a second between the flash of lightning and the thunder indicating that the lightning was closer to my location than a quarter mile away. To finish this segment, I want to show you a couple of images, uh, one from the lightning tracker and one from the radar side by side. The image on the left is the lightning tracker. Each dot represents one cloud to ground lightning strike. And the image on the right is the radar. And you can see that there were lightning strikes all over the area in south and southwest of Pagosa Springs. And also that the precipitation type in that area was predominantly snow. So definitely a thunder snowstorm to remember. The storm we're going to look at now comes exactly one month after the previous storm on April 21st of 2020. On this day, there was a strong upper low, uh, which did subsequently produce some severe weather farther east in the following days. Uh, this upper low was moving through the Four Corners area, and it was generating quite a few snow showers and rain showers and some thunderstorms. Uh, to the north and to the east of the low pressure area. And by around 3.30, it looked to me like with some showers starting to develop south of Pagosa Springs and ahead of the upper low, there was a pretty good chance that these would grow up into thunderstorms and produce some thunder snow somewhere in the San Juan Mountains or the foothills as it moved up into the mountains and the upslope flow into the mountains would enhance the updrafts and lead to more intense development. I was able to track this storm for about two and a half hours and to document the entire life cycle of the storm, starting from the time it was a billowing cumulus to when it quickly became a thunderstorm, uh, grew upscale into a complex of thunderstorms, uh, elongated, and eventually produced precipitation over a wide area of southern Colorado and northern New Mexico with a large thunderstorm complex uh, that produced thunder snow on the west slopes of the San Juans, ordinary snow in fairly heavy quantities uh, in the higher slopes of the San Juans, and also some rain and also snow and gravel in the higher elevations down into New Mexico. So for about two and a half hours, we track this storm from a cumulus cloud until it becomes a large thunderstorm complex. In this case, I concentrated mainly on still photography. So I'm going to, we're going to look at a series of still photos as I moved from the Pagosa Springs area up to the Wolf Creek ski area ahead of and in this storm. <laughs>
short video clip uh, as the storm overtook me a few miles to the southwest of Treasure Falls along US 160 up to the northeast of Pagosa Springs produced a heavy burst of grapple and a rumble of thunder and then there's also a short clip of the heavy snow falling up a higher elevation in the more stratiform part of the storm at the Wolf Creek Ski Area. Okay, I'm right ahead of the core of this thing now. I'm expecting a mixed precipitation in it. This is the same one that's been producing some thunder and lightning periodically. We'll see if it does now when I get the precipitation. Right now it's rain, but I think uh, if I get in any heavier core, it could well be some snow in with it or grovel or even hail. And here it comes. There was a rumble of thunder. We got thunder snow or drop anyway. This is some very heavy snow. Well, that concludes our season of thunder snow, 2019 to 2020, but I have one more little clip here at the end that is actually from April of 2019 for the previous season, but I thought this would be a good way to end this program with a bang. Well, that was impressive.